Those of you who follow me might remember that I have an interest in propaganda, persuasion, uh, this kind of thing. And I was just made aware of an organization that's doing something that is brilliant. Um, and it's something that if, you, if you're not familiar with the field of persuasion, then it, it just looks completely innocent. If you have read, even I'm not an expert. I've just I've read a number of books and really contemplated a lot and looked into stuff. And uh, but but if you've read books like therapeutic metaphors and uh, the uh, some of the other NLP books, and if you've read the Bernays Reader and uh, even the more lighthearted, uh, more contemporary works. Uh, somebody uh, is it Caladini or whatever the uh, the brilliant persuasion guy out of Arizona, the professor. Um, some of the uh, the great work of uh, Scott Adams, really lighthearted, fun stuff uh, like Win Bigley, things like that. Uh, if you've if you've done some studying, then you probably see some things in life that just jump out at you, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's absolutely some sort of a marketing thing happening uh, or uh, propaganda. This isn't just just an innocent thing that happened. So I had this happen and I thought I would uh, mention it. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to say, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. So I'm just going to say that, that I'm sure that this organization didn't mean to do it, but I have an idea that I have originated that would be brilliant for somebody who had strong political beliefs. And so I'm offering this out there for somebody who wants to do this. So let's imagine that you were a kind of a collectivist, a Marxist, and that was your your leaning. That's kind of, uh, today those folks are called liberals, not a classical liberal, but more of a, a left-leaning person, a progressive, or some of the names for those kinds of people. Let's say you and I, let's say we're those kinds of people, and we want to get word out. We want to change history. We want to write history. Maybe not change history, but we want to document history in our favor. And we want to proselytize to the world. We want to have our, our YouTube channels watched. We want to get our message out there. So we could start up an organization. Now, this would be expensive. So we'd have to get some big money folks to donate to us. You know, we'd need Walmart and we'd need the public radio broadcast system. Like we need some of the big places to donate to us. And then once we got those donations, we could get this thing going. We could go around and pretend that we just want to document conversations between people who have different perspectives because we want to help people realize that most of us are pretty much the same and we need to come together and we probably agree about more things than not and, and rather than just being contentious and hating each other and, and yelling back and forth we should sit down as, as neighbors and, and have these conversations and and we're not debating we're not arguing we're just kind of chatting and seeing where we can find some common ground. Isn't this a wonderful project? <laughs> well, now here's the, and I, so I, I, this comes to my attention. I'm like, wow, this is a great idea. This is neat. And then I think about it a little bit more. And I look into it. I look into who the funders are of it and the political leanings of the funders. Yep, you've got it. Very, you know, what some would call left or progressive or, or whatever. And then I looked at some of the videos and here's what they're putting out. They, they do a, a 45 minute to hour and a half, whatever, uh, video of two people talking to each other. And there's a facilitator. And I'm not going to suggest that this facilitator is like the ones at the Delphi meetings for, you know, getting community input before new projects are done, that whole scam. Um, I'm not going to say that these facilitators are anything like that or that they learned any of those lessons and are replicating that. Let's just say that the facilitators don't, in fact, guide the conversation or set things up. It'd be a really crappy facilitator if they didn't, but let's, let's say they're not doing that. Well, you get two different folks who have different uh, political views, worldviews. You sit them down. You kind of get them started with some questions to ask each other, talk to each other about. And over the course of 50 minutes, You've set up the environment so that it's going to be friendly and not contentious. So people are going to try to be pretty polite and respectful to each other. And, and at some point during that 50 minutes or an hour, the person who is the opposite of the liberal, and I don't think this group has ever even thought of 
there being the other 80% of people who aren't the 10% of wacko lefties or wacko righties. I don't think they've realized that most people are, I guess, what they, they call voluntarists at heart, even if the people don't call it that. Um, they're just kind of, you know, generally they don't care what other folks do. Uh, they don't want anybody to steal money from them. They don't want to tell folks what to do. Don't want folks telling them what to do. They don't even imagine that those people are there. They just think they're Republicans and Democrats and so conservatives and liberals. It's the only two groups that exist. But even over this course of 50 minutes, there are going to be some areas of agreement. And there will probably be some times that the conservative makes some points and the liberal goes, oh, yeah, you know, that's kind of a good point. I agree. I, you know, yeah, that's a good point. And then there are going to be a few treasured moments, minutes, when the conservative agrees with the liberal on some liberal policy. And I'm, I'm using these terms because their website uh, in their questionnaire and such kind of it has those terms. So I'm using theirs. So then here's what happens. Here's what I predict. Here's what I would suggest. If you are forming an organization, a political action movement uh, like this, you take a good editor or an average editor, video editor, you take this 50 minutes of video content of this discussion back and forth, you find the part where the conservative acquiesces and says, okay, well, yeah, you've got a good point there. And then you make a two or three minute video out of it and you release that. The other 45 minutes disappears. Maybe it doesn't disappear. Maybe it goes into some archive somewhere. Maybe it's a public archive that anybody can look at, but it's not promoted. It ends up getting no views ever or 50 or 100, but not hundreds. But then the one that you put out on your main platform is just the, the short tidbit of it. And it shows that, you know what? It turns out that the reasonable approach that when uh, various people of different backgrounds get together and really think about it, turns out that the reasonable approach is the, the liberal worldview. <laughs> brilliant. I mean, this is just brilliant. I'm highlighting these folks uh, because it's a really smart move and there's no way to lose. Like, let's say that the interview goes just horribly and let's say that there's some they're trying to get conservatives, but let's say they get a libertarian who has, you know, I don't know, read a book or something, doesn't just get all of their information from Fox News. Let's say you get some intelligent, intellectual person who doesn't watch news, they read books, they understand history, they understand human nature, et cetera, and they make great point after great point after great point after great point. And in the very end, the person with whom they were matched says, you know, just based on our conversation, I, I think I'm going to lean libertarian now. Do you think that video is ever going to see the light of day? Of course not. Now, maybe they will say, well, here's the archive link. A few months later, the person has already, the both of the people who were interviewed have both already bragged to all their friends, hey, I was chosen to be on this very special, com peaceful conversation thing. Um, so people are kind of tired of it. They have the fatigue of hearing about this person bragging about this thing. So a month, two, three later, when the video comes out, the person has forgotten. It's probably buried in the email that's sent to them that, you know, we wanted to thank you and blah, blah, blah. And our mission is to blah, blah, blah. And we're bringing so much happiness to the world, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and here's the link to yours. And then we blah, 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 blah. So yeah, the person's going to click on it. They're going to watch it. Um, they're going to think, hey, yeah, that was pretty fair. That's what happened. Well, yeah, that is what happened. But the edited version gets that gets all of the play that isn't what actually happened. It's just like any newscaster, anybody doing a documentary. Uh, and, and by the way, we all know that documentaries are basically just long advertisements for a particular point of view, right? You don't think that anybody is putting hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars into a project because they just don't really have an answer to something and they really want to investigate and, and see which side is right. Of course not. It's somebody who has a passionate belief one way or the other that goes out and proves it. And they'll have an hour interview. They pick the couple minutes at best that makes their side look best and the other side look bad. That's what they play. Make the other person look like an idiot. That's what 60 Minutes does, 2020, et cetera, et cetera. That's what all those and all the independent documentaries too. And some of them I agree with. Some of them have the same biases I have, the same worldviews or similar. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's really good. Then I'm suffering from confirmation bias. But I just thought this was kind of a neat thing. Um, I, I'm not going to mention the name of this this organization. Um, but I, yeah, I might put a link down in the description below if you want to check them out. Um, see if I'm crazy, if I'm full of it. 
Um, but, but I actually, as a matter of fact, I will guarantee you that if you talk to the people who work for this organization, uh, the employees, anybody who's making less than 150 grand a year from this organization does not know what I just said. And if they hear, heard me say it just now, they're going to say, no, that guy is a, a right wing conspiracy theorists. Uh, theorist. Uh, he's just, he's making up things. He's so paranoid that he thinks that his beloved Republicans are being attacked from every angle. Well, buddy, I ain't no Republican. I ain't a Republican. See, I used the the bad grammar just to be funny. And then I thought, man, double negative. I can't let anybody think that I'm a Republican. I am absolutely not a Republican. I think that would be an embarrassing thing to be. Maybe not as embarrassing as a liberal, but Right there, right next to each other. And then it's not like there's that much of a difference. But anyway, I thought I would toss this out there. And uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for propaganda. If you're interested in learning more about it, uh, let me know. I've got some some books. Actually, I think I did a video a while back that listed some of the books that I thought were helpful in uh, understanding this stuff. Thanks. If you, if you got some value out of this, I'd love a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you don't like this, uh, give me a thumbs down and talk about it. Tell me why.